Okay, so you've now watched eight minutes of content to learn how to make a goddamn red circle. F*** me. Simple work. Simple work. Hey, Drudes, what's up? I've been really excited to bring you this new series about the multifunction display. Ever since the Taking Control update came out back in October, I feel like all I've been able to do is play with these multifunction displays, trying to unlock some of their capabilities. Free your mind. You probably already know this, but a multifunction display is heavily used in aircraft, spacecraft, and typically includes a series of functions that you can switch through. So it's kind of like a touchscreen, like the ones used on the new Crew Dragon are a form of multifunction display, uh, but they're obviously a lot more advanced. So what I'd like to do with this series is build up the skill sets necessary to be able to create a truly multifunction display where you can switch back and forth between different commands, uh, almost like your own operating system. So if you're not already familiar with this, I'll show you how to add a multifunction display to a craft of your choice. So in this case, we've got a out of the box plane. Uh, we'll just open the cockpit so it's a little bit easier to place this. But the best example of an MFD is placement inside a cockpit. So in order to do that, you'll hit the add part button. You'll go to this new command button. And then down here in the bottom left is the multifunction display. You can add that. Now it doesn't fit perfectly on here, but then I'll show you how to resize it. Now it's important to note that the multifunction display only has one connection on its base, so you can't connect anything else to it, but you can connect it to virtually any other part. Now when you go to the properties, you'll see it has a width and a height property, and you can change those to your choosing. So in this case, we're not gonna get it perfect, but the approximate ratio is 0.5 to 0.3, and then we can just tweak it into place. And if you go back to the properties, you'll notice the limits of width and height are 2.5 meters in either direction. But we can always use the tinker panel to just scale it on both edges at the same time. Now the MFD renders in game, so you won't actually be able to see what's on the screen while you're in the designer. So you do have to play the game to see it. I've got it set up to the default here. And I'll take you a tour of what the default looks like in a second but just know that there are other out of the box options as well, such as the nav ball, map, basic info, and then of course you can create a custom MFD and that's what we're gonna spend most of our time on. If you want to edit the program of this custom MFD, you can go here to edit flight program. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks for how to not have to create programs always from scratch. But first, I want to give you a very quick tour of the default MFD. Okay, so we've got our plane loaded in game. There are a couple of different ways we can look at the MFD. I usually prefer to use the astronaut because the astronaut now has the capability to zoom their view. So I'm going to take control of them, switch the view over to first person, and now I can look down at that multifunction display that we just generated. What I mean by zoom is I can actually just pinch and zoom the screen. Enhance, enhance. And that way I can get a better view of any part of the MFD if I want to. So this default MFD has a few features. Down here in the bottom left, you've got a power button so you can turn the thing on and off. Over here is where you return to the menu after you select a particular menu item. And so if I go to fuel, you'll see I've got some radial gauges here. Go to orbit, which we're not in orbit. This is like a more advanced version of my terrain mapping feature, basic gauges, controls, a calculator. I really don't know what you'd use this for, but it's cool. I need a map. Navigation. So this is uh, the nav ball. And then if you click it, it switches back and forth between the nav ball and the map. Okay, then uh, settings. So this is screen brightness. Uh, things like that. So very, very cool. Let's get back to our designer. So what I just showed you was the default MFD. Now the default is a perfect jumping off point for any program. The only issue is 
if I go create a custom and edit the flight program, it's totally blank. If I go back and turn it to default, there's no program to edit. So a little trick for this is if you go to the website, uh, I've done a player spotlight on Pedro before. He's a dev for the game now. He is absolutely incredible. Vote for Pedro. Vote for Pedro. He has posted a public version of the default MFD program. So I highly suggest you go straight there, download it. I'll link to it in the bottom of this video. Uh, for now though, I'm gonna show you a little trick. So if I go to custom, edit flight program, and then I come up here and load program. So I have a ton of random programs in here, but if you just search for MFD, uh, I made a bunch of these, but an example would be MFD Pong. This comes with the new update. You may not have even noticed it, but it, you can load that onto your game. In the computer. It's so simple. And you'll see it's a very, very long sequence of code. Save it. And then you can play this. And this actually allows you to play Pong in the game. So you can't really see it there. I had a play button up there. But now I can drag the little Pong paddle. Now, I didn't place this in the cockpit perfectly, so it's a little bit hard to see the game. But the idea here is if you see a function in here that you like, like, oh man, how do I move that thing across the screen? you can go edit that Pong program and see exactly how that worked. So I think this is a great way to learn and this is honestly a lot of how I learned how to use MFDs. But because the purpose of this tutorial is to show you guys how to build up a custom MFD, we're gonna start with a blank screen so I can demonstrate some of the basic features here. Now, the first thing you need to know about MFDs is that they're made up of widgets. Everything on the screen is a widget. Widget! Now, there are different styles and types of widgets, and that's what we're going to spend quite a bit of time on in the future videos. Just know for now that a widget represents a different type of thing on the screen. These are all of the examples of widgets. It's important to know too that the widget limit on a screen is 100 at any given time. Now, you can delete widgets, so you can destroy widgets, or you can destroy everything and recreate the screen from scratch. Sometimes this is useful, especially if you're switching between complex menus, uh, but I'll be honest, it's somewhat difficult to hit that 100 limit on any given screen. With the time we've got left, I'm going to show you the absolute basics of how to place a widget. So we're going to place an ellipse, and we're gonna give it the name circle. And if I do nothing else, this is just going to place a circle on the center of the screen. I haven't chosen a size for it or anything, uh, but I'm going to give it a color. So we have to enter the name circle here. If you're gonna be using these a lot, I would recommend using variables for these names. For now, we're just trying to show the basics. So I'm gonna set the color. Now the color is a vector. Vectors are used heavily in these MFDs, so we're gonna have to get used to this. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? However, there is a workaround trick. If I go down to the very bottom of the MFD menu, I can put hex color in there, and then this FF0000 is just red, so this will make the circle red. So let's just save that. Let's go to our astronaut and see, yep, that just created a circle, just as expected. Now, the size may not be what we want and we may not want it in the center, but in future tutorial videos, I'm gonna show you how to start changing things up so we can create a much more cool layout. One final recommendation is that I would definitely recommend putting a camera facing the MFD so that as you're editing, right, you're going back and forth between the designer and in game, it can get a little bit repetitive to try and actually see the MFD. So if you're gonna place one like this, I would put a camera so that you can easily switch back and forth to place it, or I wouldn't put it in the cockpit, I would just put it on top of a, a capsule. 
Okay, that's all I've got for today, guys. Next time, I'm going to start talking about each of the different types of widgets. So I'm going to explain each basic widget type, and we're going to go through the coordinate system of the MFD to try and make things simpler and easier. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you like it. If you like this content, like you. Who the hell said I got to like you? Please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys next time. Bye.